This is the new iPhone 15 Pro Max with USB-C port. I'm gonna plug a bunch of things into it from a USB-C hub with ethernet, webcams, SD cards, microphones, and a ton more. And let's see what actually works with this new USB-C port. And if you were wondering, it does actually work with these little USB-C fans. First off, let's start with the big guns. I'm actually gonna connect this USB-C hub to the iPhone. And then I'm gonna plug ethernet, power, and an SD card, and let's see what it can read. So when I plug in an ethernet cable, I actually see a little ethernet symbol in the dynamic island. Now I can actually turn off cellular and Wi-Fi, and I can still access the internet, and now I'm getting ethernet speeds on my iPhone. Not only that, but I can plug in another USB-C cable that's plugged into power and also charge the iPhone. Now I'm on ethernet, charging the phone, and now I'll go one step further and actually put an SD card slot into this USB hub, and let's see if it reads it. SD card is in, and now I can go to the Files app, and here's the SD card, and I can access these drone video files right from the SD card and the USB-C hub. And just for kicks, I'm gonna plug this HDMI cable into the USB-C hub as well, and this is connected to my Blackmagic A10 Mini, and as you can see, it's outputting a video signal via HDMI and that USB-C hub as well. So that's HDMI video, an SD card reader, power, and ethernet, all in a USB-C hub into the iPhone, and it all works. Pretty crazy. All right, now let's talk about drives and storage. If you have a USB-C flash drive like this one from Samsung, I can just plug it directly into the bottom of the iPhone, go back to the Files app, and I'll see the flash drive show up right here. Not only that, but I can also use this SD card reader from Anchor. I love this one because it's super compact, has a full SD card reader and micro SD card reader. Plug that into the bottom of the phone. I'll put the SD card in that adapter, go back into the Files app, and now I'm reading those same files from the drone footage right here off the Anchor adapter and SD card. All right, one other cool drive trick with the iPhone 15 is you can actually record video directly to an external device rather than taking up your iPhone storage. To do that, I'm gonna open the camera app and then go into video mode. Once you're in video mode, you do need to enable the ProRes filming. Apple did announce you could shoot 4K60 in ProRes on the iPhone, but apparently you have to be filming directly to an external device in order to enable that. I guess because it takes up so much room, they don't want you doing it on the phone. So now I'll go to 4K30, ProRes video is enabled. And right, now that I'm in 4K30, I'm gonna plug in the Samsung flash drive. It's a 256 gigabyte, just USB stick. Enable that ProRaw filming. And now you'll see this little text, USB-C right by the flash drive. And it will tell you the amount of time you can film directly to this external device. If I disconnect it, you'll see the USB-C will disappear. And now it's gonna show me the max time I can film with my iPhone storage directly. If I plug that back in, now I'm recording to USB-C. And so let's record a few seconds of video and let's see what it looks like when you actually connect it to a Mac to copy that footage. I'll hit stop and let's connect it to my Mac studio. Here's the Samsung USB flash drive. And then I can go into the folder hierarchy and you'll see it's labeled 100 Apple. And there's the video file .mov format. And that is the HDR 4K footage right here. It's gonna be super easy to move files around. You can just record directly to a USB flash drive like this and then never have to take up storage on your phone. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's talk about charging. Apple announced during the event that you can use the 15 and 15 Pros to charge other devices, either via Lightning or USB-C. So I'm gonna plug this USB-C cable directly into my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Man, that still feels weird plugging USB-C into that. And here I have my iPhone 14 Pro and I'll plug a Lightning cable into that side. And you can see there, it has already started charging my 14 Pro. Now apparently it will do a handshake to figure out which phone has less battery and it will start charging the lesser charged phone. And you can also charge your Apple Watch and AirPods off your iPhone 15 or 15 Pro. And yes, that means you can even take something like a Pixel or other Android phone, and it depends on whether it has power delivery or not, but here you can see my Pixel 6a is now charging off my iPhone 15 Pro Max. All right, let's talk about video capture devices and webcams. One of the cool things about iPadOS 17 is you can actually plug in a webcam into something like FaceTime, and the iPad will recognize the webcam and then default to that. Unfortunately, I tried this with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I don't know if it's a power delivery where it just can't power the webcam, but it does not accept the webcam as a video input. I also tried this with an Elgato capture device, and it just does not give it enough power to actually pull in a video signal into the iPhone. Now with a different kind of USB-C to HDMI adapter, you might be able to capture video in this, but given that the webcam doesn't even work and it works on the iPad, I don't think you'll be able to use external video devices with the iPhone. All right, and finally, let's talk about audio devices. One of the great things about the iPad, like the iPad Pro with a Thunderbolt port, is I can plug in a full-on USB-C audio interface, and then an app like Ferrite is actually gonna recognize it right here. And you can see this two-channel audio interface is actually being powered by the iPad. If I plug in that same interface to the iPhone, it just doesn't recognize it. And you can also see that the audio interface doesn't even turn on. It's not getting enough power. 
So it just looks like the USB-C port is not powerful enough for things like audio interfaces or things like webcams. But if you wanted to do something like a USB-C microphone directly into the iPhone and the app Ferrite, I can plug that in with a cable and now you'll actually see it changes to the microphone input here on the iPhone and I can record with this USB-C microphone directly into the iPhone without any other adapters. Overall, I'm very glad this now has USB-C. It's gonna make things like connecting SD card readers or external drives much easier, no more adapters or dongles for that, and then one cable to charge all my iPhone, iPad, and other USB-C devices. I'm looking at you, AirPods Max. Filmmakers who have workflows that they want to record in ProRes video on the iPhone directly to an external SSD, that works great and it's going to be super fast to get it over on the Mac. Just unplug this from your phone, plug it into your Mac. A single USB-C microphone will work with the iPhone 15 Pro, but not an audio interface, which you'll have to go to the iPad Pro for that kind of functionality. And if you want to use a USB-C hub to read an SD card reader, charge your iPhone, and plug into Ethernet for some reason, you can do that too and that all works great. So let me know down in the comments, is your workflow going to be significantly changed by the USB-C port? Before you go, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Going to have a video on the action button pretty soon. Going to show you a shortcut to make the action button as powerful and flexible as possible. And if there's anything you want to know about the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, again, let me know down in the comments. We'd love to do a video on it. And before you go, you should check out one of these videos over here. They're really good.